Hello, I'm John White, and this month from the mailbag, we have Nancy writing from Alamogordo, and uh, she has a willow tree that is developing uh, several holes in it and uh, wants to know about borer control. And one of the things about willows are, and this is a globe willow that we're using as our example, but uh, weeping willows, globe willows, corkscrew willows are all very, very susceptible to borers and other diseases. They are a weak wooded tree, and unless you're just in good uh, fertile soil with lots of moisture, willows are going to be tough to grow. And uh, you can see this older one here. We have samples of, of sawdust coming out of the, uh, some of the borer entry sites. And you can see where it's been worked over pretty heavy. Here's some old uh, borer damage in it. But by the signs of this, there's a lot of damage done. And once that borer's in the tree, there's really not a whole lot that you can do. So borer control is really best by selecting the correct plant species pick a tree that is more of a hard wooded tree, not a weak wooded tree like a willow or an elm, uh, cottonwood, poplar, all those are very, very prone to borers. So stay away from the weak wooded trees. Give your tree the best of care as possible. That means uh, regular fertilizings, uh, regular waterings, uh, prune as necessary, uh, take out dead diseased limbs, and uh, that way you keep the tree as healthy as possible and um, that will help to keep the tree going a lot longer and hopefully avoid some of the insect problems that we see on other trees. So again, uh, borer control is best controlled, not chemically, but by just growing a healthy tree. There's a question from Lydia in Las Cruces asking what are the spots on the side of the tomato that she's seen and is this blossom end rot? And uh, what we have on tomato a lot of times, if it's on the side, it's probably not blossom end rot. Blossom end rot shows up more on the bottom of the tomato, so more on this uh, bottom end. This type of damage, uh, spotting or, or some of these larger, uh, almost look like burned areas, are sunburn. And uh, tomatoes do need to be slightly covered with the uh, uh, foliage of the plant if they are not then uh, they are subject to sunburning. So this is simply a sunburning. It'll probably give the tomato an off taste. And so you'll probably want to go ahead and just pull this tomato and not have the plant continue to try and mature it off. So it'd be best to go ahead and pull it, you know, use it in the compost pile and uh, take care of it from there. Okay, we have a question from Mike in Alamogordo and he's asking about uh, why some of his vegetables are developing some brown leaves on them, especially like tomatoes. And uh, uh, probably on tomatoes, uh, Mike didn't mention whether he was on well water or not, but even sometimes with city water, you can have a little bit of an elevated salt level depending on where the water comes from. And salts can burn the edges of the leaves. Um, there's also chemical burns, so you want to rule out if you'd, you know, sprayed with anything close by. Uh, but this can uh, show a, a burn from possibly from a sprinkler or something like that hitting the, the uh, plant and causing a burn on the leaves. So uh, best thing to do there is just to protect the plant from getting the water actually on it. It'd be better to water from the base and not get water up on it. Ann from El Paso has written in and she has sent me a sample of a weed and wants to know what it is. And the weed that she sent me is creeping chaffed weed. And here's an example of it in a lawn situation. This is one of the fastest uh, growing weeds uh, in the, at least the southern part of the state and, and probably throughout the southwest. It's rapidly overtaking a lot of our uh, school grounds and city parks areas. It's a very aggressive weed. It's low growing. It grows right in between the Bermuda and pegs down on the ground. It has a, a little sharp. Um, burr that we can see right here that catches in shoes and pant legs and lawnmower tires and tractor tires and it moves around very easily. Has a thick um, somewhat waxy cuticle on the leaf which makes it um, you know pretty good at fighting off uh, any kind of herbicides. You can see the stem is very fuzzy that also allows herbicides not to actually touch the plant tissue. They're held up on the on the hair on the branch there. So uh, this plant's really built for toughness. And if you dig it up, you'll find out that the, 
root on it is actually like a carrot. It has a very thick uh, root on it. It goes down very deep, and uh, these can easily grow six and eight feet in diameter. So this can be a very large weed problem, and it just shades out everything else. So this is creeping chaffweed. It can be treated with repeated sprays of, of broadleaf weed killers, uh, like Trimax, some of the ones that have the three herbicides in one that, that will help to do some good on it. But this is a very, very tough weed. Uh, Roundup does not do a real good job on it. So uh, this is one you're gonna have to stay after. If you catch it early enough, you might be able to, to dig the seedling out. But again, very, very tough weed. <laughs>